Montpellier coming into this match in 12th place despite their good fortune in recent games. There is Teddy Bobigny for Toulon who find themselves four places and four points above today's visitors. Welcome to a very sunny Stade Mayol, where it is Toulon against Montpellier as we get round 19 of the top 14 championship here in France underway with a crucial match between two sides who are looking to get back in winning ways. For Montpellier, that's a slightly more longer term view as Jeremy Rosier comes out with Thierry Mallet, Evan Ozramendi on the two touchlines. Toulon's recent woes have seen them drop out of the top six. They are looking to get back in again. Oh! The Pilu Pilu. Away we go then, Louis Carbonell kicks off against his former side who are looking to get back in the top cators and the top six playoff places and immediately going in off your feet has brought a penalty to Montpellier. Not the start that Toulon wanted as they look to turn around a run that has seen them lose four of their last five games. Oh, well... Ambition already from the start here by Montpellier, not taking the three points, going for the corner and looking to set up the line out, driving more. Brandon Panga Amosa back in the side and he delivers a safe ball into the hands of Bastien Chalavoux. The driving ball comes, but too long trying to resist and they're pushing them back over towards that line once more. So Montpellier duck out of that and decide to come to open play. Up to the five-metre line already. Poango Musa driven back. Huge push by his opposite number, Teddy Bobigny, the Toulon captain. And all of a sudden, they find themselves ten metres away from the line. Out by Kobus Ryan at the South African World Cup winner. Finds the ball, feeds it wide. Carbonell is wrapped up. Reinach, Chaleureux, 32-year-old lock forward, French international, who was called up to the uh, World Cup squad after the injury to Paul Willems. Willems has travelled with the side, but he's not in the 23 today. Comes Harbonel into Dakawanga, who's been put on the wing, back row forward. With power aplenty, the 30-year-old, 1 meter 90, 122 kilos. Montpellier building up the pressure early on. There's an offside. That's what it sounded like. Pango and Mosa feeds it back into the South African, Yansiran Rensberg. Former Bulls man feeds it out into the midfield once more. Alan Owense is trying to stop Adasio, however. And there's a knock-on. Too, too long. David Ribbons decides there's not going to be an awful lot of advantage from where he's standing inside the in-goal area. And the first chance for Montpellier and former Toulon coach Patrice Calazzo goes begging. Yeah, so there would have been a penalty afterwards, but the... Uh, Knock-on had happened beforehand, which means that the decision doesn't end. There it is. So then a defensive scrum then. First scrum of the game for Toulon. 
front row for Toulon, Priso, Bobigny and Brooks. Flexion. 340 odd kilos of front row power. Up against uh, Dosio, Poanga, Amosa and Japrazidza. And it's a penalty. Going in at the angle by the looks of it. That's Luka Japrazidza. The Georgian international who wasn't involved in the uh, triumphant march to a seventh Rugby Europe Championship title by the Georgians last weekend in a final against Portugal that took place at Stade Francais Stade Jean Bois. Great crowd turned up for that and uh, it was really a demonstration of Georgian power. Becca Kigashvili who is uh, on the bench for Toulon today was also a, a substitute in that game too. So many Georgians, of course, ply their trade in French top cattles. Nicely done. Alain Oese piles straight into Brandon Poanga Amosa. The kick comes, maybe a little too long. Not called the mark, though. Oh, charged down by Ribbons. And all of a sudden, Montpellier in trouble. Kobus Reinach trying to run it. And he's given the ball away, picked off by Esteban Abadi, who made his France international debut in this year's Six Nations. And it comes from uh, Ben White, who played quite a few times, actually, for uh, Toulon in the middle of the Six Nations, unlike uh, Charles Olivon, his Toulon teammate for France, who was always away with the French national side. Ribbons again, the former England international, takes it into contact. White out to Alain Oense, a little bit of a loose pass, but picked up by... Who's just fallen out of favour a little bit with the French national side. Gilles Villiers, another French international, picks it up. And now it is Toulon's turn to try and put pressure on the five-metre line. Alain Oense again, he's hit by Yakuba Camera. White. To Suvu. They're trying to feed it through. Gail Trian there, who recently signed a contract extension. Back out it comes again. Jamonet! Tries to go through Anthony Boutier. Two men who are vying to be then that full-back role. No, 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 no. In the French national side that Thomas Ramos has more or less wrapped up. Although the Toulouse man had been playing at uh, fly half recently for Les Bleus. Alain Oense once more. Yakuba again brings him down. And it once more by Tuisuvu. Into the number eight, Charles Olivon, former France and Toulon captain. Now very much just a player in both those sides, but so important too. Back inside by Dupré, and they're up to the line. Almost there. Louis Carbonel has been penalised. It's an advantage here to Toulon, right on the Montpellier line. What a start this is to the game. Pressure from both sides, but it's the men in red and black now who could well get the first try. Surely they'll run it in. There it is. Gail Drian then celebrating his recent extension to his contract with another try. Six tries in top catholes now for the 23-year-old wing. And the man born in Brittany. Continues to make a name for himself in the VAR. Well, unlike Montpellier, Toulon making the pressure early on count. And that is exactly what Toulon need as they look to turn around this rather losing period of the season. Well, it's good. You want to talk? In a sense, this game is between two sides all moving in opposite directions. Toulon, whose form has been falling away, and Montpellier, who've discovered theirs rather belatedly. So then Jaminet didn't get that many points last week but this will take him to 100 for the season no he's missed it and he'll have to wait to become a centurion for points in this campaign
Well, in the end, it was a walk-in. Had a few problems last week, did uh, Melvin Jaminet, after being so good the weekend before that. Ben White off the back of the uh, ruck. New rules uh, being touted by World Rugby with regards to caterpillar rucks. And also with regards to uh, driving malls as well. Moves afoot to... Uh, to make the uh, full the uh, the scrum half play the ball after the first stoppage, the first warning, rather than the customary two that exists at the moment. And they're trying to find ways of speeding up those caterpillar malls as well, where up to nine seconds is being taken to uh, kick the ball. That's dropped. It's all going wrong for Montpellier. Apologies for the language, but you can understand it. Not used to Fijians uh, being butterfingers. So then. Scrum too, too long once more. Flexion. Lié. And it's collapsed. But uh, going in too early. That will be uh, Brandon. Didn't allow. Didn't have a strong enough break foot to keep his uh, pack back. It's not easy. There's 900 kilos in uh, the scrum on each side. Generally across all of the uh, the scrums across the world in the elite. David Rubens just needs a little bit of attention. What's he done? I think he split a boot, has he? Second row forward. South African-born, ex-England international. Couple of games at the Rugby World Cup against Chile and Argentina. His last Six Nations in last season's uh, championship against France and Ireland. They've decided, along with the likes of Henry Arundel at uh, Racing and Joe Marchand at Stade Francais, to uh, leave England and come across and try their luck in the French championship, which is very much a championship on the up. Bernard Laporte watching on with uh, Toulon's president. Of course, a former hero. He must have a lot of fond memories of this place. For the first time since 2016 in his departure from the Red, the former president of the French Federation back at the Felix Mayol, but with another club. And a penalty to Montpellier this time. Well, if the camera uh, doesn't lie, Kieran Brooks. Indeed, the referee just pointing out that the Englishman is at fault. Talking of connections between the sides, we talked about Louis Carbonell. On the bench today, Paolo Garbisi. The Italian international who was involved in a swap in February, somewhat of a surprise with Christophe Tolafua, who's on the bench today for Montpellier. <laughs> Meanwhile, Brandon Poanga Amosa, the New Zealand born Australian international, launches long and finds his man. That's good. Into the arms. There of Yancy van Rensburg. And away come Montpellier now, trying to get back into this game. Ben Lamb with the run. Uh, by Nucci. However, Toulon defenders given time to fold across and close the door. Reinach, scrum half, feeds it out into the path of Sam Simmons. And the English number eight, who has been uh, a regular in the starting lineup for uh, Montpellier, as he was for Exeter. Picked it up and went. That's a roll. 
by Kobus Reinhardt quite clearly. That has been outlawed now for the last 18 months or so. An extra roll, there you go. And another attacking chance. That's two inside the 22 that they've thrown away to mistakes. One to a uh, dropped pass, and now Reinhardt just trying to get that extra little metre. Dan Bigger will send it back the other way, the former Wales international. And all of a sudden, Montpellier back in their own half. Good run. Fabulous there from Ben Lamb, Samoan international. Former Blues and Hurricanes man who's been at Montpellier since arriving from Unon Bordeaux Bag back in 2022. And you saw there the role. You're not allowed to do that anymore. It's a, a rule that came in to allow the Jacklers to come in and have a chance to take the ball off the ball carrier. Off the line out, another new rule that might come in is that uh, an, a, a throw that is no longer straight will not be penalised if it's an unchallenged catch in the middle. All things trying to speed up the game. Out by Preso playing scrum half there. Jamine does well, turns away from Lamb and then gets absolutely pile driven by the Akuba camera. Out by White. Bigger, kicks out on the full. It's the first error from uh, Toulon, really, in the game. And Bigger, one of the best fly halves to ever come out of Wales. And they've had a few. His long, illustrious career finally coming to an end at the Rugby World Cup not involved in the Six Nations other than to be talking about what was going on on the field and he didn't enjoy that very much with the way that Wales really performed losing against Italy on the final day a game that didn't involve Paolo Garbisi and a penalty to Montpellier not staying on your feet, saying the referee. Teddy Bobigny. I think what the referee said there was that uh, Bobigny, he was on the ground, went to grab the ball and then got back to his feet and that was not enough. This is the pressure being put on by Bastien Chaloreux, the Montpellier number five. <coughs> Patrice Colazzo talking with Kobus Reinach. Got to keep telling myself that he's not the, uh, the coach anymore of Toulon. We got so used to seeing him here. He didn't really have the same effect, though, that uh, Bernard Laporte did, of course. And Louis Carbonell being booed by these former fans as he looks for the first points for Montpellier and he's missed it. He's been in decent form this season. A little apology from the former Toulon favourite. So both kickers have missed one now. Penalty, holding on after the challenge. So another turnover ball with Montpellier on the attack. One of the things they've been so good at in recent games is not uh, coming up with those unnecessary mistakes. Something that we got used to seeing from them all the way through the first half of the campaign. Dan Bigger then kicks once more. Another decent kick. Although uh, the crowd are not too happy with all of the uh, metres that are being eaten up by the assistant. They thought it was a lot closer to the 22 than that. Well, one of the great Italians. Now very much in the... Uh, Coaching set up for too long. 
Ben White flings it backwards and Danny Preso can't grab it. A little bit messy this. And there's a knock on by Toulon. Advantage then to Montpellier, fed out by Dakawanga. Here comes Lenny Nucci, the 20 year old captain. Sort of Scandinavian Viking look about him. He really does not look as young as he thinks. And uh, they're going to come back because there was no advantage from that because of the good tackle by Setoriki to Isuvu. Well, there he is. He's had quite an effect. It's not often that a youngster can come in and command respect the way Lenny Nucci has. France under 20 international who uh, led them to the under 20 World Cup title. It looks like he's going to be around for a long time and surely it won't be that long until he's knocking on the door for the French senior side as well. Flexion! Somehow, if you feel it. Lié! Jean! So there's the territory. You see that all the territory that Montpellier have had, and they've not really done anything with it because three mistakes in attacking positions has undone the pressure. Great play again. Setariki to Isuvu, isolating the ball carrier and over the top on his feet. And then a little bit of talk back, which has moved the penalty 10 metres. Further forward, Jeffrey Dumaru, I think the man penalised. The man who scored a try in the uh, corresponding fixture. At Montpellier, earlier on in the season. Montpellier winning that one 27-17. Dumaru scored the opening try in the seventh minute of that match. Danny Preso, who's on the pitch today, scored the final try, but it was not enough for Toulon on the day. And it was uh, one of the games that has uh, seen the renaissance of Montpellier of late. No longer bottom of the table, outside of the uh, relegation places now. Daka Wanger picks it up and hits the 22-metre line. Reinach. Panga Amosa. Grabs an extra metre or so. Reinach, South African, looks around for Dumaru, decides to kick instead, and the runners go off. That's going to be out on the full, though. And then more mistakes coming from Montpellier. They've won their last two games away from home. Not many teams have done that back-to-back -back home victories. When you consider they lost every single game before that, it's been quite a turnaround in form. But uh, today... Well, they don't look very recognisable from the team that has been on the improvement. Not sure you're going to get the jersey yet, young man. Whilst they're still playing. Bobby Nee stolen by Yakuba Camera. And Montpellier get themselves out of jail. Now looking to run the ball, but decide to kick it in the end. Up to halfway or so. Maybe that wasn't the right. 34 years old now, brings all of his experience and... Been at Montpellier since 2021, part of the side that uh, won the... Uh, Brenner's the first for Montpellier in 2022, a couple of seasons ago. The Ube Bay in the semi-finals that year, of course. Cash where they've been in the final beat to lose that season and Toulon now with a very impressive driving mall heading towards the five meter line comes to a stop Montpellier recover a bit and they get the uh, little shove at the end that turns the ball over and Pierre Mignoni turns around in disgust and it is Toulon's turn to uh, throw away an attacking situation really well set up Got the drive going immediately. See, there's Sam Simmons when he joined the back of the the mall for Montpellier. Then it started to go back the other way. 
I think they're debating on who actually went the pushed the uh, the mall down, and the referee decided that it was the fault of Toulon. Well, that's always the risk with the uh, driving mall, as it looks good, and then all of a sudden, if the defence recovers, then you need to use the ball quickly, otherwise this happens. And with those new rolls in the pipeline, for only having one move forward rather than two, that's going to become even more vital. Patrice Colazzo watches on. Man who was involved in quite a few during his career. Push again by Montpellier. And the referee is not going to give the penalty to the white and blue. He's decided that both sides are guilty of turning the scrum, and so we're going to reset. Sur l'impact, il faut pas se décaler, même si on se décale. Ok, on reste dos axe. On reste dos axe à l'impact, on se décale pas. Ah, les deux côtés. He was saying that it was already moving just before the ball went in, and that both sides need to make sure that they remain straight. Flexion. Lié. Pelé keeping faith with the young Bass left. Prop forward, Batista Dosio. Ramon Nemosa, Poanga, Luca Chaprasic on the other side. And they have won their side, the penalty. I'm sure he was uh, signaling number three again, Kieran Brooks, the man at fault. So Louis Carbonell has a chance to clear Montpellier's lines. Well, he didn't chew very much off of that kick, so uh, they won't make it up uh, near halfway. They're still very much inside their own half. <laughs> Wasn't a particularly great kick, that. Hanga Moussa decides to go long, where Sam Simmons is waiting for it. Great open play run out of the Englishman. Doesn't get very much out of that, though, but they do get secure passage and possession of the ball. Aerial by Kobus Reinach. Brilliant cape, though, take by Drian, he's taken in the air by Ben Lapp. Taken quickly, the penalty, and they're going to run it here too long. Nicely done by White. It was well taken by uh, Pauar as well, Duncan Pauar, the Samoan international centre. Such a silky runner and great game strategist. Back he comes the other way. Melvin Jamine, a good open runner himself. He runs into contact and recycles. Ben White burrows for the ball. However, it's taken on by the forwards. In comes the Scottish international again and is part of the ruck this time. Danny Preso, the loose head prop, plays scrum half and finds Duncan Power. Preso still playing scrum half. Ben White back on his feet, back in the scrum half position. Lenny Nucci's missed his tackle. Well, Yokuba Camera had a chance to jackle there, but lost his footing and had to let go once more. To his Suvu forward. Not rolling away by Montpellier. Penalty advantage to Toulon. David Ribbons, the second row forward, takes it up and breaks three Montpellier defenders with him. There's an advantage still being played here for the home side. Over halfway through the first half, Ben White fades it out to Danny Preso in midfield. Preso, there's Reinach hanging on to the giant front row forward. Back inside by Cornel de Prea, the South African born Scottish international back row forward. Out by Power, by Villiers. Nicely done here. An attacking move once more. They could be in, in the corner. They are Duncan Power. Bends himself round the corner flag to touchdown. So they are checking the grounding, but the on field decision is try.
Oui. So then, here it comes. He's off the ground here. Oh, that's going to be a try, surely. That's a magnificent finish. Five tries this season for Duncan Power, but this is his first in top catalls of the current campaign. And Toulon extend their lead. It's a really good move all around. Drian, who scored the first try, turns provider for the second. And of course, with the corner flag now being allowed to be touched, it used to be that the try wouldn't have counted had you touched the corner flag. That's no longer the case. And it's allowing some spectacular finishes to come in, including that one. Melvin Jaminet then with his chance to reach 100 points for the season. Missed on his first attempt. Very high. And he's got it this time. And the crowd bathed in sunshine here down on the Mediterranean coastline enjoying this first half. So then with Melvin Jaminet having reached 100 points in top 14 this season. There's a bit of a problem there between Bastien Chalereux and uh, Villiers. Brave left wing to take on the uh, two-metre two second row forward. Who's well, Villiers definitely gone out. Not sure what Villiers was really getting upset about, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, Lenny Nucci is the captain, number seven for Montpellier. The man who has to uh, cope with all of this pressure on his young shoulders, still only 20 years old. So Lenny Nucci is going off for a uh, head injury assessment. It looks a little bit shaky. So uh, Tyler Dugid, the Canadian international, will come on to replace him. There he is, the number seven. He goes into three and... Oh, and he smacks into Anthony Boutier. That's very unfortunate. I'm surprised that Boutier is not heading off for a head injury assessment as well. The fullback. So then, Montpellier try to uh, carry on without their captain at the moment. Here comes Reiners Koba. Trying to go around the outside, but uh, he's not going to get around Brian Aaron Oase. Corrals him into touch and into the advertising hornings, and uh, Charles Olimont helps the South African World Cup winner back to his feet. Well, Pierre Mignoni, you wouldn't think his team were leading by 14 points to nothing. Olivon and uh, Alan Oese, but uh, he just ran straight into <laughs> the huge second row forward and uh, could not even make a, a dent in the 135 kilo, six for eight Samoan international second row forward. Not a very long uh, injury uh, list, but Etriar, Gros, Issa and Wasea are uh, some important players for Toulon missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Between our Gross and uh, Isa Ulf forwards and uh, Wasaya, former Stade Francais man, uh, who is a. Uh, there is Isa. Collapse scrum. Referee's just going to reset this despite the uh, crowd calling for a penalty for their team. So then, referee just calling for both uh, front rows to engage when he says so and uh, not wait and not push too early and to create a bit of a stability for the, uh, the scrums to form. Ball is out. Charles Oliver has got it. Toulon coming away with it. Kobus Ryan Ektor to let it go. David Ribbons is wrapped up by a couple of uh, Montpellier forwards. Slow ball. Ben White wants a caterpillar to form, and uh, there's a kick coming. Out by the Scottish international, and he finds touch. And he finds also, no, you're not allowed to do that. You've got to use the same ball. And that's disappeared off into the stand. Daka Wanga realizing that. And we will set for the more usual line out. Bit of a problem there was a contact lens for David Ribbons. Didn't hear the answer to the referee's question as to whether or not he put his contact lens back in again yet or not. Two none of one, just one of their last five top Cators home games. Is that win coming in October 2020 against Montpellier? Montpellier are the only opponents against which Toulon have won less than half of their games. At the Stade Mayol, oh, and Brandon Pawanga Amosa is not looking in a good way. So we're going to see Christopher Tolafua come on. The man who was traded for uh, Paolo Garbisi in February, there he is. And he returns for the first time to his former club. 30-year-old, former Saracen man, former Toulouse man as well. He's uh, got some pretty heavyweight clubs on his CV. That's uh, not good from uh, Panga Mosa. Must have, the way he's moving, he's twisted an ankle or so. Let's hope he comes back soon. And Mosa had his uh, season ended last uh, week by uh, a broken bone against Exeter in the uh, Champions Cup. And uh, Tolafu will get his first test back at the Stade Mayol, his former side, with this line out. Simple into the hands of Bastien Chalavert. The driving mall established. The former Toulon hooker with the ball in hand, and Toulon have done pretty well at bringing that one to a halt. And it goes then, they try a new move. Back by uh, August Cadu, 22 year old centre in his first season in top Catals. Did actually his second season, he did have one appearance against Toulouse a couple of years ago. Scrappy, but uh, Carbonell has it. Ben Lamb. Brought down well by uh, Ben White. 
Dakawaga. Off he goes. The offload as well from the Fijian. Back up on his feet. Dumeru playing scrum half. The outside centre is tackled though well. Good defence from Toulon. Pushes Montpellier back and removes all the momentum. Ryan out back on his feet, but they don't bother to wait for him. Forward by it. Adosio. Up by... Uh, oh, this is a uh, Yakuba camera. Tolafua gets it away. It's drifting forward. They don't know where it's gone. Or jeu involontaire parce qu'on se retrouve devant. Il contre et vous retrouvez devant. Mêlé. Blanche. I think it was involontaire. So accidental offside. Because of the kick and he was in front of the kick. Batty Serra. Looks like he's lining up to come on. Uh, so is there something wrong with uh, Ben White here? The scrum half for too long. Back from a long shoulder injury is the uh, French international scrum half. And it does indeed look like he's coming on. Who's he coming on for, though? <laughs> ben White in trouble. Ben White did play a couple of times during these Six Nations against Cast and Perpignan in the middle of the games against France, England and Ireland. Not sure whether this is an HIA or what, but Batty Serra finds himself back on the pitch to a big cheer from the home fans who have missed him. French international, but uh, was uh, not retained for the French based uh, Rugby World Cup after playing in the summer internationals earlier at the beginning of this campaign. Well, the scrum's going the other way at the moment, so it's uh, Kobus Reinach who has the ball in hand. Seven and a half minutes to go until the break when the clock starts again, off it goes. Scrums have been a little messy in this first half. Good push by... Uh, no, not a good push. Knee down. That'll be by the uh, tight head prop, Luka Japrazidza. And a penalty goes to Toulon. Patrice Colazzo knew immediately. Turning away, didn't want to see that anymore. There is the Montpellier uh, injury list. And it's not that long either. Same number of players out, but uh, young Leo Colley is a big miss. The uh, scrum half who made such a name for himself last season in his first campaign. Also missing Vahag as well and Tulane. To a Fakofa as well. And uh, eventually, the man who gave away the penalty, Luca Japrazidza. Doesn't look as though he exactly wants to get up. Seems to have hurt his back. Danny Preso, who was probably one of the men responsible for that, comes across to see if he's OK. Bernard Laporte. Watching on. Sporting director, legendary sporting director for... Uh, Toulon as uh, Harry Williams then comes on for Jeprasidza. Another Englishman who's made the trip across to uh, Top Cators. This uh, his sixth appearance, or his tenth appearance. He started six times. Since coming in from Exeter with uh, Sam Simmons. Another one of those men who won the 2016 Premiership title with uh, the Chiefs. The English version, that is. Nice little turn there, Brian, out of the way. So he managed to turn out of the uh, the mall and uh, Toulon managed to get a good 10 metres. Batty Serra with his first carry. Immediately wrapped up by Yakuba Camera, who's so good in those tight defence. Out by Serra. 
Forward comes Kieran Brooks. Another Englishman. Both the tight head props from England at the moment as uh, Gail Trian comes forward. Serra feeds it out wide into power to Jaminet. Jaminet goes for the kick. Villiers heads off. It's a decent kick as well. It's over the in goal area. Power can't get there for his second try. And Ben Lamb touches down. Well, another exciting attacking move from the home side. Duncan Power doesn't always score the tries, but he's always involved in those moves that lead to tries for other people. However, out it comes. The drop out from the goal line into Dan Bigger's arms. He feeds it to Dupree, the Scotland international from the Welsh international. Bigger again, Alan Oese. Good tackle by Caddo, giving away a lot of weight at disadvantage to uh, the second row forward. Nice by Brooks. Nice move again, power again with that little provoking ball through. Daka Wagger can't quite get it. Well, he played that ball surely when he was on the ground. The penalty has gone to too long. Lost the ball and picked it up again when he hadn't got back to his feet. Gil Drian hoping for a cross-field kick if it comes. What are they going to do? Go for the points? No, they're not. They are going for the corner flag and they're going to set up the driving mall. Jamane out to power again. Another little kick from this... Little maestro, the Samoan international, hoping that uh, Jaminet could follow through or Villiers. Instead, it's Teddy Bobigny, the hooker, who has the ball in hand. Set piece rugby coming up. Lenny Nucci looks like he's going to come back, is he, from that head injury assessment? Bobigny feeds it in, Ribbons takes it and they set up them all nicely. Ribbons, this is movement all the way. And then suddenly a good counter push from Montpellier, just as they get a couple of metres away from the line. Here they come again, up to the line. Can they make it? It's Villiers over. Is that the left wing having joined them all at the back? It's a try, that is certain. A third of the half. The bonus point try already, and it is Gabon Villiers, the left wing, who scores one of the more unusual tries for him. Usually a man who is fleeing over the line at speed, but here involved in the hard yards with the forwards. They won't be too happy about a back taking their glory. But look at that, the drive and over. Well, Teddy Bobigny looks as happy as anybody, and even Pierre Mignoni is enjoying that one. <laughs> so, Jaminet again. I robbed him of a couple of points early on. I thought he'd missed the first try conversion. He didn't. On 103 points then for the season. And he's got that one too. Well, that was a drive for the line that a forward would have been proud of. Off we go again. Montpellier going to need a big reset at half time. We're only a minute and a half away from that. And bigger struggling with the sun that's setting away on the right hand side, but uh, the ball has gone out anyway. And line out ball. Lenny Mucci there is, maybe he's not coming back on again. What is going on here? Looks like he's come back from his HIA, but uh, 
Montpellier resisting at the moment, putting him back on again, the Montpellier skipper. There he is at the bottom of your screen, on the right-hand side, behind Patrice Colazzo. Teddy Bobigny. Ben White, they're playing well, bigger. Out to Dupreya. Blind side forward. Delayed pass bigger. This is lovely stuff from Toulon now. Ben White, quick ball. David Ribbons runs into Chaleureux. 20 seconds to go until the half, and they're looking to finish this off in the first half, but it's knocked on by Duncan Power. Would you believe it? Of all the people. He's had such a good first half. And uh, plenty of camaraderie as the half-time hooter goes. Well, you would think that Montpellier would like to carry this on because going in without a single point at half-time is going to feel pretty horrible. Lenny Nucci does now come back on again. <laughs> Legend, a former president of Toulon, back to watch the side today. Flexion. Lié. Just. Reinach feeds. Nucci back on, Dugid returns to the bench. That play has collapsed with the referee, says he can see the ball, so wants them to get on with it. Now then, can they turn on a bit of a first phase drive from uh, their training? Ben Lamb has it, brings his power, and he's dropped it. And that will be half time. So then, three unanswered tries for Toulon in the first half. From Gerd Rian, Duncan Power, and Garben Villiers. Means that at half time here, Toulon leading Montpellier by 21 points to nil. Yeah, we're taking advantage of a lot of patience we had out there. And that's helped us to get to 21 points in France, and it's been a very good first half. Ouais, 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 ouais. Je vais passer après parce que bon, c'est qu'on fait tout le boulot quand même. Merci, Gavin. Geoffrey Dumaru, really did the work. Le vent dans le dos qui vous a pas trop wind behind you in that first half. It didn't seem to really do very much for you. Yeah, I think that uh, we're probably still on holiday from last weekend. We made some wrong bad decisions. First one was my fault with the kick. We're not really getting the physical element right. We're not driving forward enough. But we couldn't do worse than that, really. So then, uh, welcome back to the Stade Mayol, where Montpellier's players are already outside, probably suitably chastised by Patrice Caslazzo, the former coach for Toulon, whose team are joining them back out on this hallowed turf. Toulon have only lost once all season here in top 14, although they made a bit of a mess of the Champions Cup. Defeats to Exeter and to Munster. But the only time they've lost against French opposition was against Unon Bordeaux at the beginning of February. It was quite a game though, 32-37, so... Patrice Galazzo is giving his uh, reaction to French television. As we get ready for the kickoff with Dan Bigger. Waiting for the referee's approval to get things underway again.
Second half underway, Dan Bigger then kicks. And Montpellier receives. Sam Simmons takes it safely enough. He's brought down by Gail Drian. He scored the first try in the seventh minute in a half of uh, rugby that went pretty much perfectly from the point of view of the men in red and black. They're looking to get back to winning ways. They did win their last win, uh, game here, though. 44-22 against the informed Perpignan side, who, like Montpellier, have been moving themselves away from the danger end of the uh, table. Perpignan, though, still in uh, 13th place, despite their three wins in their last five games. But uh, Oyena look like they are stranded. They were only promoted last season, but look like they're in line to go straight back down again. And here's Olivon. Ben White. Or rather, uh, Batty Serra. Doesn't look like Ben White's going to come back. The Scottish international who has had to go off, and it's the French international who's been out for uh, a few weeks with a shoulder injury, who will continue for the rest of the game. Serra. It's against Perpignan, actually, that he injured his shoulder. Up by Bigger. It's a good kick as well. It's beautifully taken by Anthony Boutier, and he... Manages to offload whilst he was being pushed back by two too long players. Daka Wang up. Caught by Tua Suvu and it's been uh, taken away, but it was uh, no knock on. And Montpellier have managed to pick the old loose ball back up again. Lamb. Oh, I couldn't get it into the hands of uh, Kobus Reinek. And back comes David Rubens, the second row forward, back into the 22. Up by Bobigny, nicely on, Jamonet, and Cornel de Prier is going to score two and a half minutes into the second half. The South African-born Scottish international coming up with his first try of the season. Well, that was a scrappy start to the half, but uh, Toulon managed to get it back under control the best. Lamb couldn't find his scrum half, and David Ribbons picked up the loose ball. And a great break by the English second row forward. That set up the play, and from there, lovely quick hand. Jaminet out to Dupreyer, who found himself out on the wing. And a fourth different try scorer for Toulon on the afternoon. Well, if Montpellier were chastised at half-time, it hasn't done much to them because they've got off to a pretty slack start to the second half as well. Well, Jaminet might well reach those five kicks at this rate that he achieved against Perpignan. This to make it 28-0. Oh, he's at the post. And so it remains 26-0. Still, though, a very, very good lead. So then, what can Montpellier do here to uh, to stop the rot? Flexion. Lié. Shot. Shot. 
Not very much at the moment because out it comes once more. Power for Toulon to Isuvu. Keeps on going even though he nearly tripped over his own man. Out by Serra. Back in by Ribbon, who's been really active in attack play in this second half already. Brian Allen Oese running into his former teammate Christopher Tolafua. Harry Williams with what looks like a high tackle in the eyes of the home crowd. Charles Oliver runs through a tackle. Offload as well to find Brian Allen Oese who's trying to get away from Bastien Chaleureux. Another offload into Danny Priso. Serra. Serra decides to go for the little kick over the top and is wiped out by somebody in a uh, Montpellier shirt. However, the kick works and Toulon pick it up again. Bobigny, the captain, up against Chaleureux again. It was a really good take by uh, Bobigny as well. It was really low. Serra. Bigger. Running into what looks like Tyler Dugid. Jamine. Has come loose, but to Isuvu has wrapped it up again, and he comes back inside. The outside centre from Fiji. Serra, Bobigny, the hooker, goes forward, takes ribbons with him. Serra, there's a penalty advantage still for Toulon being played. Poa tries to cut back inside of Jeffrey Dumaru. Still trying to find the hole that. Montpellier's players at the moment folding across. There's an advantage still being played here. To prayer. Feeding it off to Kieran Brooks. And wouldn't it be something if he'd gone over for the try? In the end, the referee. Penalty, though, on this side. And so they're going to take this one instead. Tolafua there. Priyan trying to get free and Toulon looked very much up for the party all of a sudden today. Off comes uh, Baptiste Durcio. Forletta comes on for him at loose head prop and Tolafua has come back off again. Bobigny, Kigashvili has come on at tight head prop for uh, Toulon as well. There he is, peeling back round again and joining the Toulon Mall. Penalty given to Toulon. Sam Simmons has come off and Alexander Bakunye has come on for the English number eight. Are they going to go? They're going to go for the tap and go this time. The tap penalty. So then, Bobigny has it. Out it goes to Brian Alan Oise. He gets to a metre from the line. Serra, they could be in here. Not quite. Serra again goes a little bit wide. Oh, and Bigger's going to go over. Well, he looked for the pass out wide and thought, hang on a minute, there's a chasm in front of me. I'll claim the try myself. And it's five tries now for Toulon in the game. Dan Biggers, first try for too long. And the former Northampton man is taking his French side off into the distance. And Montpellier are being picked apart now at regular intervals. Well, this would have equaled his best ever haul of uh, conversions. But Jaminet missed the last one, hit the post. What can he do with this one? Better. <laughs> 33-0 to the hosts.
and it is becoming a trouncing now and a very unhappy return for the likes of Patrice Colazzo and Baptiste Laporte to their former stomping ground. So Dan Bigger then, that's his last uh, action in the game. At the moment he comes off. As Toulon, while well, they're enjoying this afternoon in the sun. Oh, charge down though, Jaminet didn't quite get that right. Picked up my Enzo Forletta. And uh, Montpellier, back where they've been several times, but holding on after the tackle. And yet another attacking move breaks down in the danger end. It's a really good kick, and the race is on. Gail Trian beaten to the ball, though, by Louis Carbonell, who has done really well to stay on his feet long enough to allow support to come back and help him out. Folletta. Harry Williams comes and supports Reinach. Well, Montpellier, what, where can they go from here? The game really has already gone. Reinach was out. Montpellier told to get on with it. Anthony Boutier has to go back the other way. It's a decent kick. Jaminet don't mark. He couldn't be sure that he was in the 22 and that ball was caught. Oh, that's gone forward from Boutier, isn't it? And that's charged down. Well, it's just one thing after another at the moment for Montpellier. Carbonell drops on it. Knock-on advantage. Toulon have it. So the referee did spot that. And there was obstruction there. Toulon player getting in the way of a tackler for Montpellier. So the referee calling a halt to that passage of play and coming back for the original fault. Which was a knock on, and so it will be a scrum. Two knock ons. Well, Paolo Gabisi has come on then as he comes up against the side that he uh, left rather quickly in February and his first return match against a Montpellier side that he played for from 2021 until well, February part of the side that uh, won the title right hand side <laughs> talking there with Andrea Massi the uh, backs on attacks coach both of them Italians the coaching crew uh, completed by Maxime Petitjean who uh, is in charge of kicking in Eric Dassel Martini scrums Roman Poitre the uh, Referee who's come in for discipline. Richie Gray, the former Scotland international as well, was in charge of contact. <laughs> Another great opportunity here for Toulon. They can go either way here. They're going to take the uh, free kick. Power. They take it quickly. Back inside. Gael Trian is... Hit hard by Clément Dumont. Sarah had to leave that. David Ribbons. Sarah back on his feet once more. Melvin Jaminet trying to break his way through. Sarah. Ribbons. And uh, it's hit the referee. And the wholesale change is coming for Toulon, including Brian DeVoe there on your right-hand side, Swan Rabage behind. Looks like uh, Leicester Fainga Ganuka is also coming on as well. So then there is DeVoe coming on. Fainga Ganuku. Who has not scored a couple of in a couple of games? He comes on for two. Suvu who's had an excellent game, an outside centre. Leicester is a more of a full-on winger. Ali. 
Reprise du temps. So Misuva comes off and Danny Depriso also comes off as well. So a change at loose head prop for Toulon on the left hand side of the scrum. That's where DeVoe will be uh, packing down. Comes on for his 19th uh, appearance of the season. Going well after that season ending thigh injury in, against Racing. Towards the end of last campaign. Montpellier have managed to win that. And will now try and run it. Which they don't really have any more options to do. They need to go on full on attack. The magic Midas touch from Lenny Nucci is ending rather unspectacularly here. Little uh, back pass by Enzo Forletta. Doesn't fool anybody in a red and black shirt, but it does keep the ball in possession for the white and light blues. Lamb. Lamb has seen a hole and he's gone through it. Ben Lamb feeds it off to Kobus Reinach and this time he does find him. Better from Montpellier. Lamb plays scrum half. Boutier has come into the fly half position. And again. Nice little move. Sarah missing the tackle. It's about as good a move as we've seen all game from uh, Montpellier. But uh, it's when they get into this position or further forward that they start to create mistakes. Tolafua. Wasn't touched, so was able to get back up again and carry on. Boutier trying to get past Fainga Anuku. Out by Vincent, who has come on as well. It's the centre. That's knocked forward, has it? Yes. And again, just what we were saying, every time that Montpellier have got themselves into a position where they can threaten the Toulon try line, they keep on making errors. We saw Geoffrey, Geoffroy Dumaru saying exactly that in his interview at half-time. He said that the first half couldn't have gone any worse. Well, to be honest with you, the second half is pretty much as bad. Great run, though, by Ben Lamb. The right wing to be able to spot holes and then bash his way through them. Off comes Jansi van Rensburg then. So uh, a change in the Jansi van Rensburg, who's a lot forward but playing on the blind side today. The South African, which effectively they had three second row forwards on. On comes Jack Singleton, another Englishman. At uh, the expense of Teddy Bobigny, the captain vacates his place. There's another English, ex-English international who comes on. Ex-World Cup player as well, but not in the last World Cup. He was on the plane with England to Japan in 2019. Flexion! Tenth appearance for Toulon, including uh, one start. The only start he's had so far, which was against today's opponents earlier in the campaign. Playing Anuku decides to kick and he's gone long. And into the Montpellier half again. That's Mathieu Lecorvec, 26-year-old back row forward who's about to come on. A former ex-France under-20 international. Represented the French Barbarians as well, and he's a one club man since 2015. Came through their academy, and he's going to come on for one of the try scorers this afternoon, Cornel de Pria. Meanwhile, Montpellier tried to get rid of the big fat zero that is uh, sitting rather stubbornly on their side of the scoreboard. Reinhardt's come off, a change of scrum half, and uh, Louis Forçons Baudet has come on, a 22 year old. Oh. 
kick down. Nice little uh, sidestep there to get past Brian Allen Oese. Fonsons Padet with his first touch. Man who can play at scrum half and fly half. Sounds a little bit like a certain Antoine Dupont. Who is back with Toulouse now after his sevens exertions. Vincent. It's better play this from uh, Montpellier. Dakawanga with a nice offload into the path of uh, Bicogne. Bicogne though is tackled into touch. And Serran decides to get on with it quickly. Oh, that's a great kick. Oh, just put the brakes on before it turned into a 50-22. That would have been an epic 50-22 as well. Forward by Boutier. Louis Carbonell. Not rolling away. That's one Rabage. France International. I think we could still call him that, bearing in mind that his last French international appearance was back in 2021 in the Six Nations, almost exactly three years ago now. Another not a great kick. He's only made about 15 metres as a Louis Carbonel with that uh, effort to get them further into the Toulon half. This was the tackle on Bakonya. Brilliant play by Fainga Anuku. Unaccustomed to him with his attacking work, but that was great defensively. Tolafua. Looking for Tyler Dugid and uh, Toulon not respecting the two-metre gap between the two lines of forwards. And so off come Montpellier again with that free kick. Forsens Badet, quick ball. Oh, that's not. Pellier finally get themselves onto the scoreboard, approaching the hour. Well, something of a lack of concentration in the Toulon defence at last, and Sam Simmons, who is a try scoring number eight, if ever there was one. Well, he didn't need a second invitation to come flying through there and score his third try in top Cator's rugby. Former Exeter legend, who has been one of the men who has been first onto the team sheet, really, for uh, Patrice Colazzo and Montpellier. Even with Richard Cockrell in charge earlier in the campaign. Scored in almost total silence. It's not a score that will really make much effect on the final scoreline itself in terms of the result. And it's Sam Simmons who uh, catches it again and off he goes once more. Well, it's uh, one of the reasons why he was such a legend with Exeter. Top scorer in the Premiership. One of the seasons, despite not being what you would regard as one of the finishers of uh, moves, but uh, that didn't stop him. Knock on. <sighs> and then uh, accidental offside afterwards. It's August Cado who has gone down needing some treatment. Well, I was saying it's cramp. 
mais bon, il faut arracher le ballon. Après. Là, vous avez les mains dessus, pas de souci. Après, s'il l'arrache en même temps, on joue. Hein. C'est pas là-bas. <rire> So a bit of a gap then whilst uh, we wait for play to get underway because of the uh, treatments. It's a hot, hottish day. Spring has very much arrived in France in the last week or so. Looks like we're all OK again. Bernard Laporte uh, <coughs> looking on the, uh, the bright side of... Uh, an afternoon that his Montpellier side will very much want to forget against his former Toulon charges. Well, Toulon charges a decade ago that none of the team currently in the side would have been in that legendary side that uh, he led. The likes of Wilkinson and Gitto, Habana, Bota, Heyman. They marched on Europe three seasons in a row from 2013 to 2015 with those little round glasses of the former French national coach pulling the strings in their successful runs. The Port was talking to uh, the uh, VAR Mata newspaper this week saying what we did was fabulous. We walked on water with extraordinary players and guys. I still get messages from them. Ten years, ten and a half years, and half of them still call me dad. <laughs> Which is a nice one. Just for Tolafu limping up. So before he was saying that uh, the problem was once the uh, scrum half had delivered the ball into the scrum, and now they aren't even keeping control with the uh, ball still in the scrum half's hands. So. Uh, Well, Didier and uh, trying to work out exactly what they can do and Montpellier struggling once more and it's a full penalty to Toulon. They are being overwhelmed in every way possible as Paolo Gabisi kicks for touch. He came on for uh, Dan Bigger. And is already up against the side he left just a few weeks ago. Jack Singleton with the line out throw to the back, too high, over the top. And uh, that was a bit of a waste. Ambition from Montpellier, as you would expect, in the position that they're in. Anthony Boutier decided that there was no way to kick that, so uh, I think he might have had the sun directly in his eyes. Decided to hold on and wait for help. Carbonell just about manages to get it away, but of course the pressure has stopped him finding touch. Into the midfield and picked up by Singleton. Melvin Jaminet cuts back the other way. Feeds it into Becca Gigashvili. And the big Georgian waits for support. Aloise, Garbisi back inside and finds Gail Trean, the man whose try started off the procession towards victory today. Serra into Esteban Abadi, the new French international. Aloise to Becca Gigashvili, Gigashvili's through, can anybody stop him? Finally, yes, Serrano, dropped though by Jaminet. Took his eye off the ball as the Montpellier tacker arrived. Patrice Colazzo, it must be purgatory for him to stand on the sidelines and watch this. His former side ripping his current one apart. And there was the uh, mistake from the fullback. Wayinga Anuku 
Just giving a little rub of reassurance on his head, saying, don't worry about it. They've effectively won this game already. The only thing really Montpellier can do here is to try maybe a couple of tries and stop Toulon getting the bonus point, because that's exactly where it's going at the moment. Well, those with an advantageous view over the top of the uh, Stade Maillot, enjoying it like everybody who's paid for their tickets inside. Fed by Forsons Burdett. All big push by too long. Forsons Burdett has been wrapped up by Serra on his own try line. And they're pushing over and have they scored? Yes, they have. Oh, the final insult for Montpellier. Batty Serra there, so quick. Both in the creation of that try and in the touching down of it as well. Look at this, big push. Put the uh, Montpellier scrum in trouble. Batty Serra recognised it as soon as that ball was out. It was all over the young Montpellier scrum half and then over the top. Fabulous play from the French international half-back. Well, it's anybody's guess actually who actually got the final touchdown, but uh, Serra is claiming it. And it's 38-7. And a sixth different scorer of a try this afternoon for Toulon. OK, merci. What a way to get back to winning ways. Easy. And it's five conversions in three games. Each of the last three games for uh, Melvin Jaminet. Five against Perpignan in the last home game and five again here today. And that rather torrid experience away at Racing last weekend is now forgotten. It was against Racing that uh, Montpellier started their recent renaissance of four wins with their young captain, Lenny Nucci. Kobus Reinek is about to come back on again. <laughs> So then Louis Carbonell comes off. And it's not been the return to... ...regarded as a hero by many. Reprise du temps. Jack Singleton has come back off again, and uh, Kieran Brooks has come on. And Ben Lamb is trying to break through once more. Nicely done. Oh, and Sam Simmons is going to score a second try. Well, it's all a bit late, and you could maybe Toulon have taken their eyes off the ball a little bit. But uh, it's not a certain try yet. So we're going to look at a little bit of foul play here. Well, number eight white is Sam Simmons himself. Je juste contrôler savoir si le coup est décollé et le point d'impact, s'il te plaît. Well, yeah, it's Ben Lamb going into the throat of uh, Charles Olivon. Is that really foul play? I think he's trying to push him off, but uh, when you've got loads of moving parts like that all the time, 
goes into Becca Gigashvili and that pushes him into Olivon. What's the crowd doing there? Bit to try and show that it was foul play. Yeah, because for me, there, he looks like he's reaching out with his hand and just catches him with his forearm. Okay, donc, the referee's clearly not sure. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I see, I'm correct with you. It's a shot that's not a rafu, so it's a game of loyal. The point of contact is on the chest and it's going to the knee. So it's a yellow card against the number 11 or blanc, is that right? So Ben Lam is heading for the sin bin for that. And it means that uh, the second try will be wiped off. I don't think it's Ons Blanc, it's not, yellow. it's not number 11, it should be 14. It definitely wasn't uh, Daka Wanga. Charles Olivon has gone off. Well, they've got the right man in the end, number 14, the right wing. Ben Lam heads off and will only come back with a minute left on the uh, clock. That second try for Sam Simmons is wiped off again and it remains 40 points to seven. So heading towards 10 minutes to go at the Stad Felix Mayol. In comes the uh, ball from uh, Kieran Brooks, who was taken over as hooker. The tight head prop. Here is the uh, replacement tight head prop, Gega Bedesvili. Nicely done again, Gail Trihan with a nice line, almost breaking through. Serhan dropped though by Swan Rabaj. And that will bring play to a stop there and a scrum to Montpellier. Looked up at Bastien Chalareur before he got the ball in his possession by the looks of it there. Maybe Galtier's uh, plans for the French national side. One of those that... Uh, actually came into the French national side when a whole host of players were given debuts, particularly remembering that uh, tour of Australia in the summer of 2021. Becca Gigashvili getting a very sizable calf muscle sprayed. Ten minutes to go. Toulon 40. Montpellier 7. They've got a couple of tries margin with regards to the attacking bonus point. And another big push from Toulon. Tolafua's head has popped up, however. It's a loose head prop who's been uh, pinged for too long. That's Bruce DeVoe. Well, it's on the other side that uh, the referee has pinged this, the loose head. Louis Carbonell, reflective on his return to the Stad Mayol. Stolen by Toulon, Gigashvili. Villiers, up by Poa, brilliantly taken. And then the kick all pings back the other way anyway. 
Everything is working out for Toulon. Drian, Fainga, Anuka, and then Drian drops it. Well, the try line was beckoning again. <laughs> Fainga Anuka is enjoying the afternoon. Well, you can when you're 33 points in front. Carbin Villiers, is he coming back on or coming off again? Kick forward by Jaminet, pinged off of two players. Arthur Vansoy was the unfortunate man who, I think, headed it back the way it was coming. And Guillaume Drian, unable to hold on. Flexion. Lié. That's better from Montpellier. However, another big push from uh, Toulon. Out the back by Sam uh, Simmons. It was Reinach who's gone back to his uh, scrum half position because uh, Louis Fosson's Padet now goes out to fly half again, which is uh, his more usual position, even though he's pretty ambidextrous when it comes to those two half back positions. Dakawanga. Ended up slipping under the pressure from a uh, little Batty Serra. Say little, he's not that little, but next to Daka Wanger he is. Reinach. Forsons Badet with a little kick through. That was cute. Oh, and he's managed to get the ball as well. That was brave as well. Wow. He knew he was going to get hit taking that. Oh, and it's been passed out by Reinach. Charles Olivon. Let's come back uh, to the bench after a little bit of a check up there on uh, what was a well I suppose a throat injury nice little kick by Forsons but look at the way he picks up though going in against Jaminet no fear whatsoever in there like a blind side flanker Gigas is Brooks again with the uh, throw is for uh, simple stuff Alan Oese and Paiwa comes away and he breaks away and it's try number seven for Toulon and for the first time this afternoon a player has scored two tries six different scores until that point but Duncan Paiwa picks up his second of the afternoon and having yet to score in top catalls this season, he's now picked up two in a single match. Breaking away from Sam Simmons to make the score on a banner day for too long. And a day that Montpellier will just want to put in the base paper basket and move on from. So a chance here for a bit of history for Melvin Jaminet. Going for his sixth successful conversion. He got five against Perpignan and he gets a new personal best again here with a sixth conversion against Montpellier. And seven points to seven. And a truly demoralising defeat for the Montpellier visitors. <laughs> Alan Oise, so still three and a half minutes to go. There could be another. Astonishing game. Serra. Forsons Badet wants to get on with it quickly. B 
Boutier. Forward waiting for somebody to come and get it. Fanganuku putting on the pressure. Montpellier just about managing to keep it on their side, but they don't. Holding on. <laughs> I wonder if they would choose to go for the points here. No, of course they don't. And here they come again. There's an overlap. Coming inside, Melvin Jabonet over. Eight tries. And a seventh different scorer. No reaction from Pierre Mignoni, but he must be very proud. Montpellier have given up. It's as simple as that. And Melvin Jaminet comes through to score. Tries in back-to-back -back home games after scoring two against Perpignan. He's picked up another one here. He's through 100 points for the season. He scored a record number of conversions and Toulon are over 50 points in the game so Jaminet again and he's got it again His seventh conversion. And it is 54-7. Montpellier's worst game of the campaign. Toulon's best. First time over 50 points for the season, having scored over 40 against Castres back in November and against Perpignan in their last game at home. Forward comes Sam Simmons, an angry-looking number eight. For Letta. Montpellier desperate to get a little bit of pride at the end of this game as the sin bidding runs out. for Ben Lamb. Few seconds to go. Kobus Reinek cuts back inside and is brought down by Swan Rabage and Cornel de Pria, who has come back on again. Christopher Tolafua, the hooter goes, still trying Montpellier. It's going to be a penalty to the visitors. Well, there is nothing else. It is only for pride now, because even if they score a try, it does not stop the bonus point. Here comes Lamb then. Back on from the uh, naughty boy step. Toulon outscoring their visitors. Eight tries to one at the moment, unless there's a little bit of resistance right here at the end. Reinach. Into Dakawanga. Move for him to left wing hasn't really worked this afternoon. Reinach again. Going through. Reinach picks and goes once more. Runs into Becker Gigas. Really, they're right up to the line. Armand Pellier. It's been held up though. Another penalty. Reinat once more then feeds it into the former Toulon man, Christopher Tolafua, the South African 
Feeds it once more, the forward trying to push forward. Tyler Dugin up to the line. Too long told to let go. You can see the ball, there is the ball. Can they do it, Montpellier here? Over they go. No, not over. Dakawanga, high ball, too high. Over goes Anthony Boutier. Time off from the, the referee. Well, Boutier comes in, does he get this ball down? Looks like he's been pushed into touch. So there's no decision on the grounding from the referee and the assistant. And then they're also looking to see whether there is a forward pass. Well, this could take a while. So uh, they've decided that that ball had uh, gone into touch, or at least the foot of Boutier has been pushed into touch. There you can see it clearly. Unlike Duncan Power, who went airborne to stop that happening in the first half. And it means that the game ends on a banner day here for Toulon. And after four defeats in their last five matches, it is a spectacular return to victory as they win in back-to-back -back games at home. Seven different try scorers. The only try scorer who scored twice was Duncan Power on a banner day as well for Melvin Jaminet with conversion kicking. It has finished here. Toulon, 54. Montpellier, 7. Well, it's difficult to know what Montpellier can take home out of that in terms of a positive, because there really wasn't very much. But for Toulon, as uh, Gustavo Tolafua greets his former teammates, whom he only left in February, Batty Serra, delighted to be back after a long road back from injury. Bobigny, the captain, offers his commiserations with a team that Toulon have absolutely flattened today in every way possible. How will Montpellier bounce back from that after the road back from oblivion was so spectacularly done in the games against Racing, Bayonne, Oyana and Bordeaux, but they've come crashing down to earth here against and at the home of one of the toughest places to win in French rugby.